Hello everyone, this is Naomi and I have with me Tushir and we are going to be the host for today's episode. In this episode, we have with us Ms. Ranjita Bhatt, an alumni of SA Majority from 2011 batch. She's currently working as a senior manager, HR business partner at Sony Pictures Network India. In today's podcast, we'll be speaking about diversity and inclusion and how the corporate feels for women who've embraced motherhood. Hello Ranjita and welcome to our podcast. Hi, Nayoni, and hi, Tushir. Uh, first Hello, of all, ma'am. thanks for having me over for this uh, alumni talkies. Uh, it's uh, the first time I'm doing a podcast, so I'm super excited for this. And uh, I think this is like a fabulous platform for uh, you know us alumni to connect with uh, younger batches to kind of share some of the life lessons that we've learned over the years uh, that we've uh, been away from campus. And uh, at the onset, just wanted to congratulate the alumni committee. I think you all are doing a fab job and you all have been very active. I've been uh, you know, tra- following you guys on uh, various social media uh, channels that you all have. And uh, big congrats for being the perfect bridge between the yesterday and the tomorrow. So that's really a big shout out to you guys. Thank you so much, ma'am. It's a pleasure to having uh, having you on board with us for today's episode. Uh, so yeah. I'll go ahead with the first question. Uh, it's been 10 years since you have been in the industry uh, uh, post your academic stint at SEMHRD. Uh, what is the one thing which you have seen changing in these years? I'm glad you asked this question, Nayoni. And uh, Trust me when I say this, that uh, the industry has seen quite a a seismic shift, especially in the last two years of the pandemic. Uh, But not just that, overall, I have seen uh, right from 2011 when I started working that organizations have evolved from a single focused mindset on the PNL to a more broader mindset. And what they want is to be seen as an employer of choice. And this is because the younger generation, you know, the millennials, who are entering the workforce are extremely choosy about the kind of employers they want to be uh, associated with. So if you see LinkedIn these days is flooded with all the uh, fantastic policies that people come up with, uh, you know, the younger crowd, they want to know uh, what life at an organization is like much before they join it. So, uh, you know, initial generations is more like uh, we are working for living, for earning a living, uh, that kind of shifted somewhere to uh, we are having a life at work as well. It's not just, uh, you know, I just work and my day ends at six o'clock. It, it's not that way anyways. And, uh, and this has got accentuated more during this COVID phase when people have been working from home and there was a big uh, merge, you know, the great merge between your personal life and your professional life. So they are very choosy about what kind of workplaces we want to work at and that's helping organizations uh, you know have these new uh, models where they're mindful of employees and their lives beyond work as well as the mental health because after all it's the healthy employees which will bring in the best results so i think that's been a very big uh, mindset shift that organizations have seen over the past years thanks ma'am for your views uh, next we would like to know how can organization help employees to maintain work life balance Right. So, um, like I said before, now that organizations have been uh, not not just viewing people as a tool, but as an asset. So, and any asset needs to be taken care of really well. So, just the way we invest in maintaining and repairing any machinery or any kind of uh, even an IT uh, enterprise solution, we, we keep upgrading it and we keep, uh, you know, seeing that it, it's in perfect working condition. The same thing kind of applies to people where we have to invest in them. And this typically organizations are doing through uh, policies. Of course, that's the most visible part of it. So there are policies where employees have to take mandatory leaves. In my organization, for example, we introduced something called Mandy's, which was uh, th- PLs. You know, uh, we, we did a, an analysis and saw that people weren't taking enough PLs, especially in the work from home setup, because People weren't really traveling anywhere or, uh, you know, they didn't know what to do with the leaves apart from, of course, sick leaves. But uh, so we had this policy where we introduced some uh, leaves, which they can, they have to mandatorily take in a quarter. 
Then, of course, there is flexi timings, and this was more when people were going to office, and now that offices are opening up, uh, it's back again. So there's no uh, clock in time, clock out time. So there's a flexibility on that. Uh, in one of my previous organizations, we used to have something called a light off policy. So at 7 p.m., literally the lights, AC, everything used to be off. So that kind of uh, gives this. Uh, uh, you know, signal to employees that yes, you need to move out, and this is not that mindset where you continue working forever and ever, not in late nights. Then, uh, of course, there is about celebrating employees' passions and hobbies beyond work. Somebody is doing some uh, fabulous job, and say that there's this lady in my organization who used to do rifle shooting. So, you know, giving her that. Uh, 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 encouragement to go ahead, follow her passions. Then there's a focus on mental health these days where many organizations have employee assistance programs, uh, which are absolutely free of cost. So you uh, book a slot anonymously and you get access to therapists uh, who can help you deal with whatever issues that you're facing. Uh, then of course, there is a focus on physical health where we have company sponsored annual health checkups so that people are uh, given uh, that, and these are company sponsored, mind you. So uh, a lot of people who may hesitate from a cost perspective definitely take this uh, opportunity. And then we have various tie-ups with holistic health platforms like a Healthy Find Me or a Cult Fit, where uh, employees are given uh, you know, access to all those different yoga sessions and Zumba sessions uh, at, at the comfort of their homes. Uh, of course, uh, in, in my organization, Sony, currently we also have an on-site gym, which uh, people can avail. If, uh, post office hours or early, early in the morning. So all this kind of uh, gives that uh, signal to people where they need to focus on their health, physical as well as uh, mental health. Uh, and also we have something called an employee voice. So my voice is what we call it. And that's to understand the pulse. So if something's working well, something's not working well, these are all anonymous uh, platform so we can do it digitally in terms of an email id or it can be physical when in office where you can just write down your concern or you know, something that you want uh, you know the, the organization to do for you so basically keeping our ears to the ground understanding what employees really want and then taking that into account and being agile about it so yeah to maintain work-life balance organizations are definitely taking that up as a priority Right. These definitely do make an organization a great place to work. Uh, so going ahead, I understand you've recently taken up a new uh, full-time role of being a mother. A big congratulations on the same. Yeah, thanks and so much. So uh, That leads me to my next question, actually. So there has always been a talk on uh, going on about new mothers and how they should feel supported and included in their workplace. So what are some of the challenges faced by mothers in the workplace? Uh, yes, so uh, this is, uh, so currently, as you rightly said, I am uh, on my maternity leave, uh, looking forward to joining back uh, in a few months time. Uh, and uh, this is my second uh, child. So I've got two beautiful daughters uh, who totally complement my life in every way possible. And uh, even in my first time, uh, I mean, I'm just telling you some of the uh, lessons that I have learned while not faced by me personally, but I have seen it around uh, happening around me. And being an HR business partner, uh, a lot of my colleagues from the business side who have gone on maternity leave come back. So I've heard a lot of them uh, you know, going through some of this. So one of the key challenges that I have seen is a lack of empathy, basically. So as a new mom, there are a lot a uh, number of challenges that she faces in her life when it comes to balancing work life commitments uh, you know timings uh, sometimes the child is not well or sometimes she needs to take an off or come in a little later or leave a little earlier because the child has some uh, you know school uh, open house uh, parent teacher meeting something it could be absolutely anything and i've seen this over the past 6 years my elder one is 6 years old uh, so what I've seen in most organizations is that there's a lack of empathy because people feel that uh, this is an excuse some of the ladies are giving just to uh, maybe take a break. But it doesn't work like that. Being a mother is absolutely, like you said, it's a full-time role in addition to your corporate role. So uh, that is one of the things that I've seen. Then also, uh, some uh, you know, there's a sentiment with some people that ML is like a vacation. 
it's not at all like a vacation it is a 48 hours crunch in 24 hours kind of a situation and uh, if that's if in fact i feel women uh, who have just come back from their ml if anything they've learned some really new skills like patience like jugaad like uh, fantastic time management like multitasking and i think these are some uh, of these attributes which no uh, corporate project can give you so of course uh, that is a thing that people really need to uh, understand and also the a mentality that you know you've been away for say 6 months so you need to catch up this is uh, not in any organization that i have worked in but uh, some of my friends have uh, kind of experienced this which which is uh, since you're talking about the challenges that women face when they come back from ml so these were some of the thing that i just summed up uh thank you ma'am so what are your views on the fact that some organizations are offering equal paternity leaves to males as an inclusive measure yeah that's uh, a great question actually which stems from the previous one that um, you know uh, this is a, absolutely a fantastic policy and uh, when i spoke about lack of empathy right because most of those who don't have empathy towards new moms are possibly uh, you know some of our male colleagues and when they are the ones who are given uh, paternity leave which is equal in measure they know that okay uh, uh, they are bringing up a child is also a father's responsibility as much as it is a mother's and uh, this is where the whole equal parenting journey starts right from birth so uh, those who feel that uh, you know a maternity leave is just like a vacation this is a good eye opener for those people so in fact uh, i would like to quote a 2021 article of mckinsey which uh, was titled like a fresh look at paternity leaves and why the benefits uh, extend beyond personal it mentioned that fathers who take leave to help their partners their families and themselves uh, in fact the taking leave is not just helping their partners and families but themselves as well and in this era of employee mental health challenges company should take notice about this so in fact we've seen some of our uh, you know global leaders like uh, the twitter C- the recent twitter ceo parag agarwal he took a maternity leave uh, which absolutely made headlines way back in 2015 mark zuckerberg had taken a mater- uh, paternity leave sorry uh, and that had also uh, been you know a quite a uh, point to ponder on for most of the corporates and back home closer home uh, we have uh, virat kohli who took uh, a paternity leave uh, to be with anushka when his daughter was born so when uh, leaders of that stature uh, also are vocal about the fact that they are taking a paternity leave um, i think it's uh, high time our industries also notice that and take that as uh, you know a new path breaking because that's where we are passing on the message that parenting is equal whether it comes to mothers or fathers and in that sense uh, i've seen two companies which is zomato in india uh, was the first one uh, which granted 26 weeks paternity leave and that was followed by novartis and uh, i think they've uh, been doing a fab job of that Uh, by focusing on the father's role in uh, bringing up uh, a child and basically they are addressing the mindsets right from employees homes and that translates into an organizational mindset shift as well so i think it's a fantastic policy that's uh, as you rightly said you know it's equal when it when raising a child is equal uh, responsibility for the father and the mother so uh, going ahead unfortunately because of societal expectations and gender roles that we as a society have attached to men and women lots of professional mothers feel guilty when they choose work over home so do you feel the same and how do you deal with this guilt <laughs> so this is something which is called as a mother's guilt a mom's guilt and uh, mm-hmm. trust me uh, that part is an integral part of motherhood which never goes whatever choice that a woman makes so if somebody has chosen work over home there's a guilt of not being a good parent and somebody who's cho- chosen home over work like uh, many uh, women drop out of workforce soon after having a child then there is a guilt of wasting one's talent and the investment that we've made in our education and the, the, all the sacrifices that our parents have made so that guilt is always there you know uh, but yes um, if we look at uh, you know uh, how many people from our uh, 
workforce is really uh, facing all this so if we look at our diversity is typically you know 30 to 40 percent and if we assume that every uh one woman in every three uh, are going the family way then we are almost talking about 10 percent of good well-trained resources so that's a huge chunk right uh which uh which is uh, if if they step out of workforce then there's a huge void that we are going to face there so uh, basically what anybody can do in that situation is uh, these feelings are natural like i said so acknowledge your feelings that's absolutely natural to feel guilty and ask for help when needed because uh frankly it the a uh, single person uh, i mean th there's a well-known saying which says it takes a village to raise a child so uh, you can't do everything single-handedly you will need support and that guilt well just acknowledge it and just let it be because that's natural and in olden times we used to have joint families which was a huge support uh there were you know so many family members to take care of children but now when we are moving into a nuclear family setup it's just the mom dad and the child uh women have to think around creating their own support system so that could be like a daycare that could be nannies uh i mean uh whatever works for each one there is no one answer that goes uh in this case but whatever works for each one but start creating your own support system right from the maternity leave days or even maybe pregnancy time you know people can think about how i'm going to uh carry on but dropping out of workforce frankly uh, is not uh, i mean of course there are reasons that people do that but there are ways that uh, you can figure out uh, you know to stay back and put your skills to better you maybe there are a few years that you need to take a st slight step back but uh, like one of my leaders had told me uh, you know life and your career is a marathon and in every marathon sometimes you sprint and sometimes you take a water stop a water break or a pit stop and that's perfectly fine and uh, for organizations just simply having a maternity leave policy isn't enough Uh, i feel organizations have to create a, a post maternity friendly ecosystem through various allied policies and infrastructures like mom's rooms so you know somebody comes back uh, from uh, a maternity leave they're still kind of feeding their babies so there's something there's an infrastructure which can be provided and i've seen that happening in many organizations where they provide a mom's room flexible work timings uh, for especially for new moms uh, remote work if possible for new moms like a re then a reliable crash facility or a tie up with uh, you know a nearby crash facility so that uh, these kind of policies definitely make it uh, much easier for women to to get back to work and ease in as they go uh, right ma'am thank you for that answer recently ma'am linkedin has introduced a new section wherein people can add career breaks to their profile whether it was taken for a full time parenting bewilderment caregiving a gap year layoff or any other life needs or experiences so what do you think about this move from linkedin yeah uh, so in our society unfortunately you know career breaks are still viewed as a stigma so it's more like you know somebody is lazy or incompetent or unsure about their career or unfocused you know these are the kind of uh, thoughts that go around now uh, whenever any uh, recruiter or hiring managers they see a break in anybody's uh, you know cv for example so uh, or, or a linkedin profile as these days uh, people may, uh, are more are, are seeing linkedin profiles more than just cvs uh, but if a professional is able to clearly highlight the reason behind the career break then uh, it helps uh, even recruiters to assess if the candidate may have in fact gained certain skills during this break as well uh, so i'll just uh, give a few statistics here uh, you know almost uh, 64% of women have experienced a career break at some point of time in their career and the top reasons for this typically are uh, parental leave uh, medical leave and mental health reasons so the top being parental leave and almost 48% out of these women uh, say that they had had to choose between prioritizing their career over their kids and uh, most of them worry that they are not spending enough time with their children because of their career so uh we see that a lot of women are taking leave uh prioritizing their uh, children over their career and that may lead to a short term break so it's very common uh, 
basically the point that i want to drive that is very common that people take uh, these kind of leads however uh, many of them find it very difficult to tell their prospective employers that they are taking a career break because of their children or many of them are nervous to return back to work uh, after taking a career break because things have moved much more and unless you have upskilled yourself in that break which which is very rare but yeah some people do that uh, it it's uh, definitely a bit of a concern so when linkedin itself uh, puts up this uh, you know career break section where you can elaborate more uh, that is again a, a giving us uh, you know uh, create, trying to create a culture where it's okay to have career breaks and this is a way where you're saying that you have prioritized uh, your life during that short time frame so uh, i think this is a very uh, good initiative by linkedin and i'm sure uh, you know most of the recruiters out there and hiring managers will also uh, sit up and take note of this and uh, this is an attempt i must say which helps to normalize the positive effects of taking a break in in uh, one's career which should not be seen in a very negative light uh, as as traditionally seen right uh the next question is our last question ma'am while many organizations focus on women as a part of their diversity equity and inclusion agenda is this really a holistic approach like de and i has always been criticized as being focused on metrics and not actually a shift in mindset so what are your views on the same uh so uh, like we mentioned in our discussion so far uh, organizations uh, do acknowledge that uh, dni is important and but however their focus so far has been more on women and gender equality uh but there are various other cohorts as well uh, like recent uh, uh, you know awareness has been about the lgbtq plus communities but apart from that there are various niche segments especially in the indian society uh, of uh, people who are vernacular ed- educated uh, or who are from tier 2 cities or people with disabilities uh, who are still facing an uh, exclusion uh, environment so dni should also uh, focus on uh, these cohorts and why uh, dni is so important is uh, because in order to survive in the buka world we definitely need a lot of innovation in the way we work and that is possible only when we have diverse perspectives on the table which is again only possible when people are able to be authentic in their work uh, and feel safe in an environment where they can uh, voice their thoughts without any kind of inhibitions which brings us to a very important aspect of uh, dni which is having a psychologically safe environment and uh, basically it's an environment where people uh, believe that they can speak up candidly without any inhibitions or concerns or e- and it's okay even if they make some mistakes uh, as long as uh, they are able to voice their opinions so basically it's about uh, removing fear from an organization and this fear can be for both kind of people those who are underrepresented and don't feel empowered as well as those who uh, uphold the status quo and they are feeling threatened or cautious or very you know to change their way of working so having that kind of fear is harmful in any way for a, for the growth of an organization and one thing to note is that psychological safety does not mean that our focus on performance has dwindled right in fact we are trying to bring in diverse perspectives so that our performance can be enhanced and that is how the culture of an organization can be built to have a more psychologically safe environment so in this you know many leaders ask for data to back up any kind of dni agenda if where is the data only then we will uh, you know have for dni as a focus but actually it's a vicious cycle we don't have data because there is no initiative and there is no initiative because we don't have data you know so it kind of goes goes uh, around uh, but what we must understand is most of our organizations are still very early in this journey and so we need to trust we need to know that why we are doing this and then commit and the data will follow of course so uh, you know dni is something that really needs to be taken up as a focus area a lot of organizations have uh, proceeded on that journey and are doing fabulously well in that sense 
तो मैम वी जस्ट वॉन्ट टू थैंक यू फॉर सच एन इंसाइटफुल पॉडकास्ट सेशन एंड आई एम श्योर दैट द लिसनर्स एंड स्टूडेंट्स ऑफ एस सी एम एच आर डी हैव अ लॉट टू लर्न फ्रॉम योर जर्नी एंड वी विश यू ऑल द वेरी बेस्ट फॉर योर फ्यूचर इन डिवर्स थैंक सो मच हियर इट वॉज ग्रेट टॉकिंग टू यू गाइज एंड ऑल द बेस्ट टू एस सी एम एच आर डी लुकिंग फॉरवर्ड टू बींग देर वेन एवर देर आर एनी एनी मोर सेशन ऑफ फुट प्रिंस Uh, that will be on campus uh, i think the two years that i spent on campus have been uh, quite life defining for me and fabulous memories associated there thank you so yeah. much guys thank you so much thank we you, look man. forward to having you on campus soon